Hello, grade eights. <laughs> uh, this is my third time making this video. Actually, it's my fourth time because I recorded it in the first period and then had to stop it because we're here. But uh, we are recording this for the fourth time. So if I sound a little impatient, it's because I am. So here we're reviewing. We have nine questions in review of your new two chapters in grade eight math on surface area and on volume. And in order to be successful in those two chapters, you have to have a very good understanding of how to find area of your five basic shapes, in this case, squares, rectangles, triangles, circles, and parallelograms, as well as some brain teaser questions for questions six, seven, eight, and nine in terms of when you have uh, more complicated formulas that you have to use. So if you're using this as a study tool, make sure you can either copy these all down right now and do them one uh, all at once, and then press unpause and watch the whole video, or simply start at the first question Try this first question out, press pause, and then press unpause to see if what you did was exactly what you should have done. So the first question is a square, and we know it's a square because these little lines here are telling us that all four sides share the same length. And the formula for area of a square is side squared, and we know that because last year you probably used length times width or base times height as the area of a square, or maybe side times side you might have used as well. But because we've learned Pythagoras, we learned that the formula for the area of a square is actually side squared. So since the side length is 8, we're going to take that and we're going to substitute from our formula that we wrote. Underneath it, we're going to put 8 squared. And underneath that, we're going to put 64. And since we're dealing with area, we're going to say meter squared. And we're going to circle that as being the area for that square. So again, write your formula, substitute the information, and simplify to get an answer. The second part is we take our 4 and we substitute our 8 for our side length. Now here, uh, we have a variable coefficient relationship, which we know is multiplication. So when we substitute, I don't want you to write 4 times 8. I don't want you to do that. I want you to utilize brackets to show multiplication because we don't want to use multiplication symbols because they look like variables of x. Okay. So once we write it as 4 bracket 8, that means 4 times 8, we're going to simplify it to be 32. And what we're really looking for is the distance around the shape. So there's four sides. Oh, I forgot to explain that again, but I'm too tired to do it because I did it last time. So we have 32 as our distance around the perimeter of the shape, which would then be 32 meters as the perimeter. We're still recording. We're good. In the next question on rectangles, we have LW as our formula for area. Now, in grade 7, you might have actually used the multiplication symbol. You might have also used base times height. But for grade 8, the expectation is you use a cursive L. Don't use a small L because a small L looks an awful lot like a 1 when you write it in printed form. So instead of using length times width and base times height, we're just going to use an LW and don't use a 1 or an L coefficient with a small L because it looks like the number 1. So when I substitute in, I'm going to put a 20 for the length. I'm going to put a bracket and a 12 for my width. This means 20 times 12, which is 240. And since we're dealing with area, we have meters squared as our area. In our second question, we have perimeter. Now, really what we think about is we have this length here and we have this length here. So... 2L means we have two lengths for the distance around it. Plus we have a width and another width, so we have two widths as well. So we have two lengths and we have two widths. Now another way to write that is 2L plus W because we have two of them that are lengths and a width together. And of course, if we expanded this using distributive property, which we all understand, we would have the same formula that we started with, two lengths and two Ws. So when I substitute the length of 20 in here, so I have two 20s, and I have two 12s. The two 20s would be a distance of 40 meters. So this distance here and this distance here are 40 meters. And this distance here and this distance here are 24 meters. So the total distance around that rectangle would be 64 meters. So again, formula, substitute, simplify, and answer. Your answer for question for the rectangle with perimeter has to have a formula and three lines underneath it with proper work shown. And of course, I also have meters instead of meters squared. The triangle question. Our area is for base times height divided by 2. That's the formula learned in grade 7. Now, you might have learned it 
like this, base times height divided by 2. You might have also learned it like base times height divided by 2. But neither one of those formulas are we going to use this year. We're going to use just simply BH over 2, which is the same thing. Now, the base of this particular triangle is 15. And the height, this is not the height and that's not the height. The height is the perpendicular distance, which means 90 degrees, from the base to the apex or the top of the particular triangle. So the height of this particular triangle would be 8 meters divided by 2. So I write my formula, step 1. Substitute the base and height, step 2. Step 3 is simplify, so 8 and 40 would be 120 over 2. That's step 3. And step 4 would simply to be simplify 120 divided by 2, and you get 60 meters squared. Now don't circle those. I'm just circling to show you that there's four distinct steps. Formula, substitute, simplify, get your answer. Now the perimeter, of course, is the distance around the outside of it. So if I was to walk around the triangle, I would walk those three lengths which is why we have side plus side plus side, or 15 plus 10 plus 9, which when I substitute would be 25 plus 9, which would be 34. Okay, so the perimeter of that shape is 34 meters around the outside of the shape. Your next question is a circle, which is also a grade 7 outcome. And here we have the formula for area is pi r squared. Some of you might have been pi times r times r. You might have learned that. But that's the same thing, since we now know exponents of 2, of pi multiplied by the radius squared, because r times r is really r squared. Okay, so in grade 7, you might have used this one. But by grade 8, we're going to use pi r squared. So since the diameter is 14, the radius is going to be half that. So the radius of the circle would be 7 meters, and therefore we'd have... 3.14, or in this case, 3, multiplied by 7 squared. Now, you can use for pi, you can make it equal to 3, which is approximately 3. It's also approximately equal to 3.14, or it's also exactly equal to 3.141592 something, something, something to infinity. So since we don't have the ability to write this all the time, we usually approximate it to be this. But if you don't have a calculator, I always let you use 3 because without a calculator, you should be able to do that pretty quick. So now that we substituted, we have 3 multiplied by 49. Make sure you do, with bed mass, make sure you do your exponents first before you do your multiplication. At 3 times 49, it's going to be 150 less 3, which is 147. Now we're going to have meters squared as the area. <clears throat> Get rid of that circle there. The second one, the circumference of a circle, or the perimeter of a circle, or the distance around the periphery or the outside of the circle. So in order to get that, we learned in grade 7 that that formula is pi d, or 3 multiplied by the diameter, which is 14, which would be, excuse me, 42 meters around. Okay? So the perimeter or the circumference of that circle would be 42 meters. And the last question in our basic shapes is the parallelogram. And the formula in the grade 7 is base times height. So the base of this particular one is going to be this distance here, which is 9 meters. The height is not 8, but rather, again, just like triangles, the perpendicular distance, which will be 7. 9 times 7 is 63, which means the area of that circle will be 63 meters squared. Now the perimeter, it'll be two lengths or two bases. It should be, sorry two bases and two widths, I guess, if you want to do that. <laughs> or technically, all four sides together. So side plus side plus side plus side. So we have a 9 plus an 8 plus a 9 plus an 8, which will be 17 plus 17, which will be 34 meters as the distance. Now, since we, we can have two bases and two widths if you want, but... But we'll keep perimeters standard like that because we actually don't use it as a formula in much. Now, getting into the more complicated ones, the area of the red. So really what we have here as a formula is the area of the circle or square, take away the area of the circle would be the area of the red that's left. So if I take this and remove it, there's the area of the square. But if I think of this as being a cutout, I cut out that much of the area 
So we'd have to subtract the area of the circle from it. Now, since this distance from here to here is 10, then this distance from here to here is 10, which means I can then assume that the diameter of that circle is 10, and the radius would be 5. So the area of the square would be 10 squared, which is side squared, take away pi multiplied by the radius squared. So when I substitute it, that's what my formula would look like. Do my exponents first. Do my multiplication second. Oh. I get the final answer of 25. In the second last, or sorry, in the seventh question, we have a triangle. Uh, and we have a square cut of it. So it's the triangle, which is going to be base times height divided by 2. Take away the missing chunk, which is a square. So it's take away side squared. That will be the formula we use. So if we think about what did this triangle look like before I removed my square, it would have been, where's my square go? There it's there. Okay, I'll just keep it over here so I know where it is. The base would be 2 plus 4. So the base was actually 6. And the height was actually 5 plus 2, which is 7. So for the area of that triangle, before I removed the square from it, suppose like that, something like that, it was 6 times 7 divided by 2, or 42 divided by 2, or 21. Now take away from that the area of the square, and since this is 2, excuse me, since this is 2 and that's 2, it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. So here's my formula. Here is my substitution for all of the information I know. And as I simplify it, I end up with 21 take away 4, which is going to be 17 square meters for the area. Okay? So here we have really 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines of work. Each one of them kind of circled there for you to see. And the next question asks for the area of the red. So here, before I had, the, the red was a whole circle, so it was simply pi r squared. But I took away the area of that square from it. So pi r squared, take away the area of the square, will, rem will be the area of the remaining red. Now, we have a problem, don't we? Because... If I think about just the circle, that's easy. The diameter is 10, which means the radius would be 5. So it would be 3 times 5 squared for the area of the red circle with nothing taken out. But here we have this square with no side lengths, just a diagonal. And what you were supposed to figure out was that since this is a square, since this was a square, if I cut it in half, I would end up with a right triangle a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 10 meters, okay? So if I was to put squares onto that right triangle after I cut it out, this square here would be 100 square meters. And since the other two squares attached to the other two legs of the imaginary right triangle are going to be the same size, each one of them would have to have 50 square meters because 50 square meters plus 50 square meters is the only way I can get 100 square meters if these are both the same length. So with that said, erase this. With that said, we're still recording, everything's good. We're going to have a distance, if I think about that, oops, I should have kept that there. This is going to be 50 meters squared. So the side length, or this length right here, is going to be the square root of 50, which we're going to use as approximately 7.1. So the side length of that square is going to be 7.1, and then 7.1 squared, approximately, would be 7.1 times 7.1, which we know is going to give us the area of that square that's already attached to that. So even though I don't need to use a calculator, I know since I've already said this to be 7.1, and this is going to be 7.1, and since I already know the area of that square to be 50, this is going to be 50. Okay? There's an awful red square. Here, I'm going to have 3 times 25, or 75, take away 50. So formula, substitute, simplify, get an answer of 
meters squared. The area of the red that remains would be 25 meters squared. Now we have one last question. This question right here. So the area of the white square was cut out of the area of the red square. So the area of the white square, the area of the red square was side squared. We'll call this S squared red. Take away S squared white will be the area of the remaining white. So 14 squared is the area of the red square. Take away 10 squared, which is the area of the white square, or 196 take away 100, which would be 96 square meters for the area of the remaining red.